Hello everyone. This is going to probably be a very strange experience. Um, this is a voice over the original video for Cindy's Insiders Club number 92. I had recorded it, but one of the settings was off and it only recorded the video and not the audio. So luckily somebody had recorded the readings, so I was able to sync that up with the video, which is awesome. But I am going to recreate the rest of the video. Oh, I'm going to be talking over the actual video, so obviously my mouth is not going to match the words, but I am going to repeat all the content that we discussed because it was truly an amazing um, webinar and I have no problem going back over the content because it is priceless information. So let's get started. Today we are going to be doing a different format than we have in the last two webinars and if you're new to the webinars you will not recognize this format because this is what we did most, well, all of the time actually in, in the other 90 or 89 webinars that we had previous to uh, several of you joining in to this group. And so basically there will be times when I turn off the lights and we just go into a channeling mode or like tonight, we will be like lecture format, but I am still in channeling mode. I am still listening and giving the messages of the seraphim, but delivering it in a slightly different way. And something that I didn't mention the first time that I recorded this, so this is good, is that when we are either in that, you know, mode where we are going into the channeling like we have been or if we we're doing it in the style that this webinar is being presented we have the seraphim around us with us amping us up and raising our vibration and working on us for the entire two to three hours however long we're on the call or the webinar the thing is, when we are in that space, when we turn off the lights and we, we come together and we go up into that space and we're doing the work through the pure channeling system and we're getting our messages from there and I'm having you or I'm not, the seraphim are directing me to lead you into that place where you relax into the, the space, into the energy of wherever we are, whatever dimensions we are working. And I am telling you, okay, everybody, you know, clear yourself, you know, get back into your, your space, melt into the energy. I am keeping you, or we are keeping you, at higher levels of vibration in a very consistent, constant way. So definitely you're going to have some really deep shifts when we do that. That is something to be treasured and to be enjoyed and to feel really blessed to be able to be in that atmosphere together, experiencing this, building the energy in a strong way that we normally wouldn't be able to, not that we couldn't access it by ourselves, but as a group energy, it's always stronger when we're coming together and having a main focus and working together in that way. And when you're in that constant space of staying in that high vibrational space of nothingness or connectedness, whatever you want to relate to it as, you are going to have major shifts in that way, okay? Not to say that when I'm lecturing in this format that you're not going to have those shifts because you absolutely will because you're still in the energy of the seraphim. They're still feeding the upgraded light codes to us. However, it is going to be different. And what the seraphim told me is 
tonight they wanted me to present in this way for two reasons. Well, there's probably more reasons, but the two reasons that I got from them was this. The first reason is that they've been taking you on a very high vibrational experience in the last several webinars that we've been doing it where we're going up into that space and just being in a constant high level of frequency. And they wanted to slow that down a little bit today. For whatever reason, most likely it's just for our own good that they don't want to beam us up so high that we <laughs> beam up into whatever, um, raise our vibration too high. They want to make it comfortable for us. And the other reason is because when I um, channel them in this way, I can do a lot of teaching, whereas not that their words aren't teaching mode because they have so much amazing wisdom and knowledge to share with us, but in this, when they're delivering their message that way versus this way, it is much different. And so they wanted me to be more included in the delivery of the message. And so this is when they ask me to do it in this format that we're doing it. So that's just a little bit of something for you to know. So tonight um, I had sent you a handout and we will go over that. But before we go into that, I want to tell you the main focus of what the Seraphim wanted to, me to discuss with you tonight. And it's like two things. One of them is that it is more important than ever that we start finding our own truth, finding what is true. Okay, so if you are aware at all, you're hearing about things like fake news and everybody is discrediting that person or that agency. And you don't, what the Seraphim told me is that nobody knows. Everybody's confused and nobody knows the truth. So you cannot depend on anybody to tell you the truth right now because they don't know the truth. Nobody knows the truth. That's what the Seraphim is saying. The Seraphim are saying nobody knows the truth. Everybody's confused. Everybody's confused. So, more than ever, we cannot live our life now like we did even six months ago. We cannot be lazy anymore and allow the government or whoever to drive our bus for us. You know, in the past, the government would do things and we may not agree with it. We may agree with it. We may get pissed off about it, but we just lay back and just let it happen anyway. Okay, that's just been really a lot about the American culture. Okay, some of you that are joining us are from Canada and um, Australia, so I can't speak for you guys, but here I can say that we pretty much lay down and roll over. Okay, and it's not a, it's not anything to be proud of, and it's not a pretty thing. But now the servant are saying it is detrimental to your experience, your personal experience of what you want in your life to not do that any longer. You cannot afford to do that in any way if you care about how you want your life to look like, how you want your universe to be. You cannot do that anymore. You've got to stop being lazy. You've got to start making some decisions from yourself for yourself. You got to look at things that are presented and go in your heart, go in your gut, tap into your intuition and see what is really right and true. Now, I spoke about in a previous webinar about coming from a place of your third eye. Okay, using your third eye and your intuition like a natural sense, like you do your your sense of smell, your sense of hearing, your sense of touch, your eyes, your physical eyes, to start learning how to be very much in your intuition and use it as a natural, normal sense. More than ever, this is super important. And so you can tap in, and if you're not sure about something, go into your heart and then go up and be connected to source energy, be connected to your angels and say, 
tell me the truth. What do I need to know about this? What would be the best thing for me? Help guide me. Ask questions. Be connected as much as possible and find out what it is that you need to know for your own truth. At the same time, super important for you to start deciding how you want your universe to look. Because remember, what you see on the outside is a result of what you have been seeing on the inside or creating on the inside. What's, what's on the outside is in the inside. So you need to start changing it all on the inside and not expecting anything or anyone on the outside to make changes or be different or look different because it's not happening until you do it for yourself, until you go inside and you start being really consistent and really with conviction and declaration within yourself that this is what is you know right for you and what you're going to to have in your experience and your universe this the, the seraphim cannot impress upon you how important this is it's so important and the other thing that they wanted me to talk about is being here for each other being a part of the universe as a responsible participant and I did two videos recently on my YouTube which I will send you guys the links for if I forget to send it and you are watching this please email me and ask me because they will really help to explain this part it is important to know that the universe is one it's one energy that means all of us are playing a part of the bigger whole and the universe needs us to step up and participate in this experience. We need to be there for each other. Imagine if this group alone could be there for each other. This group of, I think there's 15 of us. Imagine if we could truly be here for each other, okay? And then also be there for yourself, in your, for yourself, for your immediate family unit and the, the life and the people that are around you that you interact with. Now, talking about being with your third eye open and always being connected and saying, how can I serve? How can I serve you, God, source, universe, divine, whatever you consider your highest power? How can I be of service so I can do my best and be the most responsible and participate in this greater, bigger whole? of one because it is through us that we are conduits to create and give and receive miracles from each other okay giving and receiving miracles 50 50 and, or giving and receiving whether it's miracles or not giving and receiving 50 50 we have to be very aware of that now i'm showing a card passion over perfection and I don't remember why I showed that, but I will say that don't ever hold back on what it is that you want for this world, for yourself, until you have it all together, until it's perfect or you're ready to show it to people. Do you know how many times I step out and I do things that are not perfect? Look at my many YouTube videos. They are not polished. They are not perfect. Half the time, I may not even look very good to be on a camera. But I don't stop it, stop myself when I feel inspired. I, half the time when I do those videos at the beach, I am not intending to do a video. I'm going out there to be with myself and I, and I always tell myself, I'm not doing a video. I'm going to just be here for myself. And then I get inspired with some message that, that the angels or God or the Ascended Masters are saying, do a video and talk about this message right now. And I may not have my makeup on. I may look like crap. But if I get that message to turn on my camera and say a message because I am being guided to do that, I am being a conduit for the divine, for the angels, for the universe, so I can serve as maybe somebody's miracle that day. Maybe something that somebody really is desperate to learn or hear that day. And I don't say, oh my goodness, no, I couldn't do that now. I didn't put on my makeup or look what I'm wearing or I'm not in the mood. I just want to be here for myself. No, 
when I hear a message, because I am always connecting, when I get that nudge, that message, talk about this, even if I am not in the perfect conditions or not even the perfect way in my own mind, I will do what I am asked to do because I commit to that. I commit to being a positive force. And sometimes I'm more positive than others. I am not like Mr. Mrs. Positive 100% of the time, but that's just who I am. I'm transparent. I will be who I am. Sometimes people don't like my big mouth or what I have to say or my attitude, but you know what? At least you know what to expect from me. At least you know that I'm always going to be honest. I'm always going to say what's on my mind. You don't have to guess. You don't have to worry. I'm talking about behind anybody's back or I'm doing something behind anybody. I am completely transparent and whatever I'm feeling, you guys are going to know it regardless if you like it or not. That's the way it goes. That's who I am. So when I'm asked to give a message, I will. And the seraphim are asking all of you to be aware of this and make this part of who you are. Be open. Ask, how may you serve? How can you be a conduit to help give and receive to yourself and the people around you? Okay? Now, I sent everybody another list of different miracle statements, and I want to go over that with everybody. And I hope that everybody's using their lists that I sent from the last webinar and reading through it, because these things are something for you to continue to study, okay? They are to be used for you to learn from, even if you say, you know what, one statement a day. I am going to read one statement a day and work on that. Or read all of them and see which ones really work together, which ones are calling you to pay attention to them, and then working with that one. Okay, so these are just a, a, an amazing tool for you to use. And I just feel like it's really important for you to understand really what what we're talking about when we're talking about a miracle. So here we are. We'll start at the top. The number 10, the use of miracles as spectacles to induce belief is a misunderstanding of their purpose. Yes, we do not ask for miracles to happen so we can believe that miracles are real. Okay, miracles are a natural part of our being. And if you remember from the original set that I sent you last time, uh, we talked about how they are a natural thing. And if they're not happening, there's something wrong. Okay, this is something that we don't really even have to be amazed about. Because when everybody's participating, as the seraphim have just told you, can you imagine if everybody was aware that they were this piece, this conduit, that they stay open and they stay connected and they ask, please use my vessel. How may I serve? How may I serve my the people around me? Okay, now it could, what is serve? Whether it's smiling, giving somebody a compliment, encouraging somebody, calling somebody and saying, you know what, I was reading this, this affirmation today and I thought of you. Or, you know what, I was thinking of this funny time that we had and it just, you know, took me out into a better mood and I just wanted to say, you know, I'm really grateful for you in my life. You know, those things make a huge difference. So if those can be the little miracles or the big miracles that make a difference in someone's life. But could you imagine if everybody was conscious and said, how may I serve? How may I give and receive miracles? So I can be part of the dance of the universe. This world would be amazing. Okay, it's natural. You don't need to induce any belief. It just is. Number 11, prayer is the medium of miracles. It is a means of communication of the created with the creator. Through prayer, love is received. And through miracles, Love is expressed. And we talked about that also on the last um, webinar. And um, 
I know on the original recording of this, I had flipped back to the other Miracles number one sheet. And I guess at some point that's going to happen, but I'm going to open it here for myself so I can remember what it said. And um, yes, here it is. And what it says is miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the love that inspires the miracle. In this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. So that is number three on your first list of miracles. And just think about that. When you are connected, when you are saying, how can I serve? That is totally coming from a place of heart. That is coming from a place of love, naturally and easily. You don't even have to try. And you know what? When we're talking about how may I serve, how can I be of service, how can I support, it's not about pushing it or forcing it to happen. That's not what they're talk that Seraphim are talking about. They're talking about making it happen naturally, being connected, listening to your guidance, and taking guided action. Don't go around saying, let me become this miracle person. How can I, you know, encourage someone? How can I go do this? How can I go do that? Don't push it. Don't try to make it happen. That's not what this is about. This is about being connected and listening to your guidance and taking guided action. It's really important, okay? Number 13, miracles are both beginnings and endings. Oh, wait, I forgot number 12. Sorry. Miracles are thoughts. Thoughts can represent the lower or bodily level of experience or the higher or spiritual level of experience. One makes the physical and the other creates the spiritual. And what I get from that statement is, you know, we are multidimensional. So no matter if we are feeling like we are getting a physical miracle or a energetic or a spiritual miracle. We are multidimensional. It's happening at all different levels. So if it's happening on one level, it's definitely happening on another level. And what they're telling me right this moment is that sometimes having somebody, for example, okay, this is just an example. So having somebody approach a miracle with you on a spiritual level. So say somebody says, you know what, I'm going to pray for you um, that things get better or that, you know, you're healthy or whatever it is. And some people might think, oh, oh, thank you. But they are like thinking that's not really something great. You know, if, if only they were just healthy or if they could give them, you know, a thousand dollars to help them through this hard time, that would be even better because that's the physical means that they're looking for, not so much the prayer. Not that they would poo-poo the prayer, you know, but, you know, when you're desperate and, you know, you need to eat, money is something that might be what you feel like you need more. But if somebody is willing to do a prayer for you, do you know how many blessings you get from that? Because I will tell you just in my pretty vast experience on learning the law of attraction and manifesting, that... When somebody asks for you to creator, to the universe, to source, to, um, to deliver something for you, whether it's health, whether it's something you really need or want, it is often more likely to come to you faster when somebody asks for you because you are not attached, because they are not attached to it. So when they're asking for you, they're truly asking and letting it go, giving it up, giving it to source to make it happen. And see, that's what we're supposed to be doing when we're manifesting is put out the intention, ask for it, and then let it go and let it come in. But a lot of times we end up being very attached to things and then we keep asking and wondering when it's happening and we keep asking over and over again as if they didn't or the angels or God didn't hear it the first time when they did. It's like going to a restaurant and continually asking every time you see the waitress where your 7-Up is. Or, you know, are they going to bring your 7-Up? 
you don't you don't do that you ask them for a seven up and you pretty much expect that you're going to get it normally you do unless there's some weird problem okay so it's the same thing you don't keep asking the universe over and over as if they didn't hear it the first time because that tells the universe that you didn't trust that you're not trusting that you have to keep asking over and over again so when somebody says a prayer for you that's a huge blessing that's huge okay because they're going to do it and they're not connected to it and you are most likely going to receive it much faster so pray for each other help each other in that way so there you know it's it could be physical spiritual energetic there's so many ways to work it but just know that if you work it from an energetic or spiritual or physical way that it can shift in all ways so maybe it starts out as one way and then shifts into the other way number 13 miracles are both beginnings and endings and so they alter the temporal order they are always affirmations of rebirth which seem to go back but really go forward they undo the past in the present and thus release the future now this is an awesome, awesome, awesome statement. Remember, I will always keep telling you over and over and over again because you will forget. I shouldn't affirm that, but I just know because it's something that I'm re always reminding myself of. We only have the present. The past is gone. The future is never going to be here. There, the future is a complete illusion. The past is an illusion too because you can't touch it. You can't, it's not even real anymore. The only thing that's ever real is right now, the present, the now, the now, the now. So when you, the miracles are both beginnings and endings, that when that comes in, it's like this rebirth where something shifts and it will undo what may have been from the past that has gotten you to where you are now or something shifts for the future where you won't even see whatever that might have been coming for you from the future okay it goes back to we don't really have linear linear time it's just like number 12 where <clears throat> it's physical spiritual energetic it's all everything at the same time so when you get a miracle it is a beginning and an ending and it shifts everything in all directions of time and space number 14 miracles bear witness to truth they are convincing because they arise from conviction without conviction they deteriorate into magic which is mindless and therefore destructive or rather the uncreative use of mind now this is a very interesting one too I love all of them, but let's break this down a little bit. First of all, you know that when you come from a place of conviction, and I have seen my own, um, you know, uh, clients that have decided, you know, one day I am declaring I'm going to Hawaii. I know one time they were all together at a luncheon and they all started declaring they were going to Hawaii. They had no idea how they were going to go, how they were going to come up with the money, how they were going to make it happen, but they just made a solid declaration. And do you know that every single one of them went? Well, one didn't. She flaked. She could have gone, but she flaked. But all the others had no idea how that was going to happen, but they declared it and they made it happen. And I've seen that happen not only with them, but many other people who join me for my journeys that may not just have money sitting around. I mean, there are people that are very blessed that have money sitting there that they can use on themselves for their personal growth and want to invest in their spiritual growth and change. And they come with me on these trips. Some people really want to come, but they don't know how they're going to come up with the money. But I have seen it over and over and over again where they just decide, you know what, I don't know how I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. And they give me a down payment. And once they give that first amount of money, somehow magically, the rest of the money comes in. I see it every single time. I have never had anybody give me money for a trip where they did not get the rest of the money. And 
In all cases, they got it earlier than they expected. So it's just a matter of the declaration and making the commitment and taking the first step. Because when you do that, the universe will say, oh, you're serious. You declared it. You're doing it with conviction. You took the first step. You, you, set, you raised your hand and you said yes and you took action. And now the universe has to jump in and help too. Because the universe, that's what it's there to do. Now, this that's the way to get whatever you want, is to declare it with conviction. That is always the way. It's like a huge statement. It's a huge energy affirmation with that has a lot of gusto and power to it that just makes things happen. Now, this part where it says without conviction, they deteriorate into magic which is mindless and therefore destructive, or rather the uncreated use of mind. Now, I like magic. I have nothing against magic. But look at the difference between a miracle and magic, okay? Miracles are just like, wow. Magic is like, that's cool. Let's see if we can create it. And magic has an essence of mysticalness. It just depends on what kind of magic you're doing, too. But it is... The energy, just feel that right now between magic and a miracle. It's just like a completely two different energies. So that just speaks for itself, okay? Totally speaks for itself. Number 15. Each day should be devoted to miracles. The purpose of time is to enable you to learn how to use time constructively. It is thus a teaching device and a means to an end. Time will see will cease. Oh, this is, uh, that should say cease. I fixed that, but somehow it didn't get fixed on here. Time will cease when it is no longer useful in facilitating learning. So again, time will cease when it no longer useful in facilitating learning. The reason why it takes us time to get anything is because we have not learned how to receive and really get that concept set completely down that if we only have now, that means everything is available to us now. It is only that time when we get that completely that things will come to us faster and time will no longer need to be something that, that we need to, to learn with. It is a teaching device. Everything is totally available to us now. Number 16, miracles are teaching devices for demonstrating it is as blessed to give as to receive. They simultaneously increase the strength of the giver and supply strength to the receiver. I absolutely love this one. Everybody is a giver and a receiver, and like I said, 50-50, okay? It is just important to give as it is to receive. Do not be an over-giver. Well, all you do is give, 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 give. That is not healthy. You have to learn how to receive too, or you are putting the universe out of balance, okay? You are... The universe is always balancing, balancing, balancing. So if you go out of balance, you're putting the universe into a position where it needs to find a balance. So if somebody wants to give you something, I don't care if it's um, a crayon or a sandwich or a trip or a, a computer and, you know, it is something normal. I mean, obviously there are times when you would just be like, no, that's not appropriate. You have to learn how to receive. Do not not receive because you don't know how to receive. It's it, not because you don't need it. It's because somebody is giving it to you and they are learning how they are not made. Sometimes they are learning, but they are actually balancing their, their need to be a giver. So, you know, there's sometimes when people in our lives are clearly receivers and we are always giving to them. We are always paying for them for some reason. We are always doing something for them. And pretty soon they are, that's actually hurting them and it's hurting you because they start feeling very unworthy and feeling very um, like 
like they're not good enough because they never get the opportunity to share in the giving and receiving. It's really an awful thing to do to anybody. So don't think you're doing them a favor by always paying for them, always doing everything for them because they need the opportunity to feel worthy and like they can be participating healthily in the relationship. The one thing I love about this um, statement is, listen to this, they simultane is, it is as blessed to give as to receive, okay? It is as blessed to give as to receive. They're both, both blessings and blessed. They simultaneously increase the strength of the giver, okay? Simultaneously increase the strength of the giver and supply strength to the receiver. Who's the bigger winner here? Now, the receiver definitely is winning because it's like, shoo, thank you. Okay, that's a no-brainer. They are relieved, they are, or they are in awe, or they are just having a wonderful moment in that moment of receiving a miracle. But the giver is actually getting an increase of strength, being a giver. And simultaneously, both the giver and receiver are ble being blessed in the process. This is beautiful. This is just an amazing, an amazing realization right here. Really take this to heart. Number 17, miracles transcend the body. They are set in shifts into invisibility away from the bodily level. That is why they heal. So as you know, you are a spirit body even more than a physical body. We are having a human experience. We are eternal spirits. So that is why when we can shift, when we can transcend the body and shift on energetic levels, we can heal. Because we are perfect in those energy. Matter of fact, it absolutely takes working on the energy to heal anything in the body. And that's why a lot of times doctors cannot bring healing to their patients because they're not working on an energetic level. This is why I love light activation, because there are a lot of other healing modalities out there, but they are limited in where they are working. They might just work on the chakra and the auras. They might only work on certain things within the chakras and the auras. Light activation healing, we are all inclusive. We are doing it big time. We are going on all different levels and in very inclusive of everything. And so that's why I see so much wonderful change and shift in clients because light activation is so inclusive. 18, a miracle is a service. It is the maximal service you can render to another. It is a way of loving your neighbor as yourself. Recognize your own and your neighbor's worth simultaneously. So this is very close to what I was already talking about when we read number 16, is it's the biggest service you can do with another. Well, this is, actually this was a topic before I even started reading this. So this is what was a very important one that the Seraphim were, uh, point that Seraphim were discussing before we started reading this page. As well as what I was talking about is allowing people to receive as well as give, not always being the giver and making a relationship a one-way street. You've got to give and receive to show both of your worths simultaneously. It's a very loving thing to do. Number 19, miracles make minds one in God. They depend on cooperation because the sonship is the sum of all that God created. Miracles, therefore, reflect the laws of eternity, not of time. And this is exactly the other point that Seraphim were making before we started reading this about we all have a responsibility to participate and show up as part of this one, as part of this collective, to be open, to be tapped in, to ask, how many may I serve? 
to listen for your guidance and take guided action and be a part of the symphony that this universe is, to participate, participate in helping to give miracles to other, receive miracles from others, but in a natural flowing way, no, at no time pushed or anything. If you hear in your mind, you know what? I just feel like so-and-so needs this right now. I'm going to just send it to them. Or it, I, I think so-and-so would like to know about this thing. So I'm going to tell them about this thing. If you're feeling guided, if you hear the, the, the whispers of the universe nudging you, that is when you need to take guided action. We are all here being miracles for each other. This is why we're here. So be a part of it. Join in. Be a positive force that is giving and receiving and playing, play, dancing with the universe. Okay, and like I said, those videos that I did recently, I'm going to send those to you and please watch them because it talks a lot more about this. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and go into our meditation and we will come back and do readings after the meditation. The reason why I'm doing the meditation now is just in case people don't make it all the way through the readings that some maybe they fall asleep or whatever and then we have the meditation at the end and they miss it. So I'd rather just do the meditation now since we're in the energy of it anyway and after the meditation we will do the readings and you know if it the readings get too long listening to everybody's even though I personally personally feel like the messages for other people can be for you too. Um, but it's your choice and, um, you know, you can decide what you want to do. So I have my crystal here and I'm going to take you guys on a nice meditation to connect with some different energies and continue your journey with getting your, uh, coat, your light code upgrades and just connecting with the higher vibrations and frequencies. So everybody get ready. If you have a crystal, you can put it in your hand, put it in your left hand, that's your receiving hand. Unless of course, you're on the opposite side of the world, then it would be your right hand because apparently things flip. Um, so everybody go ahead and get comfortable, move around, move your body around, relax, close your eyes, take your glasses off and start taking some nice deep breaths all the way down to the bottom of your abdomen and then allow your breath to release out and don't be afraid to make noise. Don't be afraid to let your breath out and make that <sighs> noise because that is very healing it really is and it really gets you settled into place so let's all start taking some nice deep breaths and really allowing ourselves to breathe out and breathe in, taking time to really fill yourself with air and oxygen. Start letting go of your day, cutting the cords, melting away everything around you and being fully present in your moment. Being here for yourself right here, right now. And attach grounding cords to the bottom of your feet and the back of your first chakra, allowing those grounding cords to drop down into the earth, digging deeper and deeper. 
and free falling straight to the core of the earth. Wrapping those cords around the giant crystal in the center of the earth, begin feeling or imagining Mother Earth's slow, strong heartbeat. And as you feel that or imagine it, slow down your body and your energy to pulse with that same slow rhythm. Get in sync with Mother Earth. When you do that, when you get in sync with the Earth and the energy, you become in sync with everything in life. Everything seems to flow and just become so much more easily and naturally. Feel that pulsing of Mother Earth's heartbeat, pulsing up those grounding cords all the way to your first chakra and back down. And beginning to pulse with that same rhythm on its own, remembering that when you ask energy to do something, it does it. All you have to do is say, do this, and it will do it, and you can just sit down and enjoy the benefit. Moving your attention to the center of your head and dropping down slightly into a bubble of beautiful light. Attach a grounding cord to that bubble of light, letting it drop straight through your body, down to the core of the earth, Anchoring your spirit, anchoring your presence fully into your body. Just feel your spirit, your presence pulling down into your body, into every cell of your body. Filling your body and expanding out bigger than your aura. Affirm. I am sitting fully in my presence. Really feel what that feels like. And letting your presence ground into the earth. Feeling or seeing your aura around you. What color do you see first? And please remember to be willing to explore different colors. If you saw a different color than your norm, use it. If you think of a color right now that you have never used, use it. Remember what I said, nothing changes until you change. So if you never make any changes, if you do everything the same way you've always done it, then everything will always stay the, the way it's always been. Changing the color of your aura is an easy way to shift your energy, to do things a different way. And it's also opening yourself to expressing more parts of yourself that you don't normally express. Now sure, we all have certain colors that we like to use in our aura, but explore a little, live a little, try something different. It activates a different energy within you. It'll unlock places in your mind and your spirit and dimensionally that you wouldn't unlock Otherwise, it is so important to be willing to experience different aspects of yourself. Whatever color you are using in your aura, make sure it is full, thick, and even all the way around you, above your head and below your feet. 
adding a protective covering around your aura just to hold all your beautiful energy in around you. Open your crown chakra like the most beautiful, huge lotus flower that opens and unfolds and opens and grows and grows larger, wider, taller, until you feel it growing and reaching into that beautiful translucent light of the divine. Allow golden white sparkly liquid light to be pouring down from the divine, the universe, God, whoever your higher power is. Allowing that liquid light to infuse into all of the nooks and crannies, the petals of that lotus flower that is your crown chakra. And pour into your brain, clearing your mind, every nook and cranny cranny, allowing that liquid light to shower through your brain and just clear it. Open your mind, clear your mind. And then allowing that liquid light to shower through your throat, through your body, through all your bones and muscles, through your blood, pulsing, through your heartbeat and into your bloodstream and down to the core of the earth and then slowly spinning in a circular motion through your body in a clockwise direction and out around your body clearing your emotional, mental and spiritual bodies and then allow it to spin out through your world and out into the universe and into infinity. Open that third eye nice and big, opening that crown chakra and feeling that connection be between your higher power, your third, your third eye, which is your sixth chakra, your intuition and connecting it down with your heart chakra into your soul self feeling that connection and then bring up a connection of earth energy from the core of the earth connecting it straight up through your feet all the way up to your heart center where it meets the connection of your higher power and blends the perfect beautiful cocktail of earth energy and your highest power energy grounding you into your heart chakra and allowing you to feel grounded and comfortable in your body mind and spirit and allowing your intuition to be an active part of your everyday life Take in a nice deep breath. Now moving your attention down into your throat chakra. Just feel your awareness, your consciousness moving out of the center of your head into your throat chakra. And sit in the middle of that throat chakra and see what it feels like to be visualizing your life sitting in that throat chakra and visualizing forward through the throat chakra out into the world around you. What does it feel like to be sitting in your throat chakra and observing your world? What message comes to you as you're sitting there from your throat chakra? Now, if you heard a message, I want you to remember that and think about it later. If you didn't hear a message, I want you to say, 
If I could hear a message from my throat chakra, that message would be, and whatever comes to your head first, I want you to listen to that. And I want you to remember that message because that is the message from your throat chakra. And I'll just share mine, what I heard the first time I did this and the time I did it right now was, I have a lot to say, but no one's listening. Wow. Okay. It's just interesting to perceive from your different chakras because when you go into that chakra and take your consciousness and awareness there, you'll hear things from your chakras that you may not realize they're saying to you. So it's really worth to do that, explore different chakras and see what they say. And again, if you feel like you don't hear anything, ask. If I could hear a message from my heart chakra, it would tell me, and then whatever you hear, that is the message. Okay. Take your consciousness and let's travel a little bit deeper. Let's go into your heart center. And be in your heart chakra. Your consciousness, your awareness is in your heart chakra. And you're sitting in your heart chakra. And you're looking forward through the heart chakra out into the world around you. What does it feel like? to be in your heart chakra, observing the world around you. And ask yourself, if my heart chakra was to tell me something right now, my heart chakra would tell me that allow that message to be heard. Now I want you to bring your awareness and your consciousness deep into your soul self, which is located very deep within your heart chakra. So feel your consciousness and your awareness sinking deeper and deeper into your heart chakra and imagine or feel a pale pink energy, which is your soul self deep within your heart chakra and allow yourself to go in there. Take your awareness into the pale pink energy. Remember, you don't have to try to figure out how to do this. You tell your energy what to do and it will do it. From your soul self in that beautiful, pale pink energy. If my soul self was to tell me something right now, it would tell me and listen to that message. The message between your heart chakra and your soul self, which is also in your chakra, could be completely different. This is what my classes are about. This is one of the things that I'm huge about teaching is learning to sense different energies. Just like a message from an angel would definitely sound different from a message than from God or an ascended master, or a deceased loved one. You are in your heart chakra. You just went to a different location within your heart chakra and received a different energetic message. Now, if you feel like those messages weren't that different, then do not judge that. You trust whatever came to you, okay? Part of being intuitive is trusting the messages you get. The more you trust, the more 
you will be tapped in and get more messages. So you have to just trust what you're getting along the way until you refine, 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 refine. Okay, take a nice deep breath. And now take your awareness, your consciousness, down through your body, down through your legs, down through those grounding cords, traveling down deep into the earth, going deeper and deeper into Mother Earth, until you find a beautiful cave opening and allow yourself to walk into this crystal cavern cave, walking further and further in, and looking at the beautiful crystal that lines the inside of this gorgeous cavern. What color are these crystals? And how do they look if you had to describe them? Now walk deeper into the cavern and sit down. Find a comfortable place to sit down. And I want you to feel, close your eyes in that cavern for a minute and feel the energy that is coming from the crystals. Just feel what it feels like to sit in that crystal cavern. And imagine that you're barefoot and your feet are just rubbing the ground. You feel the ground under your feet and you're just moving the bottoms of your feet along the ground to feel the texture. Your eyes are closed. What does that texture feel like under your feet? What does that dirt feel like? It's the first time this dirt has ever been touched by a human body. How does it feel? Open your eyes. How does it look? And take a nice deep breath and just be part of the beautiful essence and energy that you're sitting in. It's so healing. Now I want you to notice as you're sitting there how you're feeling in your energy. Just sitting there, how does it feel to be there? start walking through your cavern and I want you to go find the rest of the group. Go collect with the rest of the group and stand in a circle and everybody feel this energy of this cavern. And look at everybody's faces and how they're all lit up. And it's just like they're glowing because of the feeling of being in this space, of being able to travel deep within Mother Earth and experience the pureness, the freshness of the energy and the connection that you feel being held basically in the womb of Mother Earth. Sit down and feel what that feels like to be held in the womb of Mother Earth. Let's come back up our grounding cords. 
allowing your awareness and your consciousness to come up the grounding cords and come back into your body and you're grounded in your body in your presence your aura is already full you are back into that energy located in the center of your head in that bubble of light you're in your sanctuary grounded and back in your space now feel what it feels like to be back in your body and how is that different from when you were feeling what you felt like being in that crystal cavern two completely different ways of being I don't know if you can describe the difference. For me, whenever I have gone into inner earth, when I've actually done that physically, when we go to Shasta, or when we did this experience right now, I always feel like I go into my heart space. When you go inner earth, you go into your heart space. It's not so much about what's around you. Yes, you do see what's around you, but you're very much connected inside and connected to earth. But when we come out of the inner earth, whether it was this experience or when we're in Shasta and we come out of that inner earth cave, then you're more present of everything that's around you. There's so much energy from people and mass consciousness and whatever is going around in the earth around you it's completely different just like when i took you into your heart and your soul self the more you start working and realizing what different energies feel like the more you're going to be able to maneuver being in this life and tapping into multi-dimensions and using it for your benefit. Take a nice deep breath. Being in your sanctuary, I want you to feel your awareness and your consciousness lifting up now out above your crown chakra, outside of your body, and into your higher self and see all of us in a circle sitting together holding hands the left hand will be on the bottom the right hand will be on the top hold the hands of the person to your left and your right and feel that divine liquid golden white light pouring down in our circle and then starting to swirl slowly around us in a clockwise direction, including us in that beautiful swirl of divine light. The seraphim angels come and surround us as a group, sitting behind each one of us, just like the last time. And then they begin lifting us up, lifting us higher and higher in dimension, in time and space, becoming to a place of timelessness, to a place of higher and higher dimension, which brings our awareness to a higher level of perceiving and receiving. continuing to allow them to take us further and further out and you continue to breathe and allow yourself to be taken until we are in this perfect space of silence and light and the seraphim begins sending in their light codes and know that every time we come to this space and they are sending in 
light codes, they become stronger and higher vibrating and more upgraded every single time. Because each time, you can take on more and more and more. It all happens in layers and levels. So every time, you can take on a higher level of consciousness, perception, wisdom, intuition, healing, whatever it is that is there for you now, and set the intention of some things that you would like included. Remember we have our bubble of light in the center of the circle. We all have our own bubble of light and whether you put back into that bubble or that bubble is still there with the intentions that you already put in there or you want to change it and add something else, it's totally up to you. Set an intention and put it in that bubble. and begin sending through your third eye energy to enliven whatever you put in your bubble. To receive anything, you have to energize it. Wake it up. Fill it with energy. Make it come alive. Make it Breathe life into itself. When you do this, you are saying, it is here, it is alive, it is active, it is here with me. But when you come from a place of, I'm putting this intention here because I don't have it and I'm asking for please, may, may I have this? No, you put your intention in it and you breathe life and energy into it. As long as something has life and energy into it, it is alive, it is active. And your third eye is connecting in with that bubble. Let it grow and connect in with that bubble and say thank you to it. Thank you for it being there for you. And you are meeting it where it is. So when you need it, you're with it. Now, the seraphim are sending in light codes to strengthen this connection and this breathing life and energy into its being and connecting it with you. Now I want you to imagine this beautiful shaft of energy that seemingly comes through all of the universe, through all of eternity, through all of your dimensional lifetimes and connect into that bubble of light and whatever that you have created into a breathing energy that this shaft of life is magnetizing from every dimension that matches the energy of this intention that you have just created into in a real breathing living energetic thing that it attracts to from all of the dimensions that might have the same energy connecting to this magnetic pole of light and let it pour through that shaft of light into your bubble connecting to energize it even more because it remembers that you have already had this so many times. You have access to it in so many dimensions.
but we are bringing it into your present, bringing it into your now as you know it. You have many nows in many dimensions, but we are anchoring it into the now of what you know now as your current and present now. Allow those energies to pour into your creation within your bubble now. Meanwhile, you continue to meet it with your third eye, creating more energy, more breathing life into it from your third eye, participating in the connection of its presence in your now. Meanwhile, at the same time, the seraphim are sending the light codes to upgrade your energy and to connect all of these things together to make it solidified into your body, mind, and spirit, into your current now and presence. How powerful. And leaving everything as it is working right now, because remember, energy follows thought. So you have totally set this up to run on its own. You don't have to do anything but receive the benefit. So as it is doing this, we are also going to ask it to do one more thing to send a bubble of this that is already created and is continuing to be amped up and created to create another bubble of it and let it come through that third eye into your body, into that sixth chakra, up into the seventh chakra, create another one, create that, let that bubble drop into every single chakra and be created into each chakra so every chakra has a bubble of this living breathing in your present current now continuing to be energized and boosted as it is working as you set it up it works in each one of your chakras and then expand another one out to include your whole body your whole aura and into your whole world, your whole universe, and into infinity as a whole. Feel it completely breathing and energized and boosted and alive within every part of your being. We feel it and we affirm it with conviction and we declare, we declare it as it is right now in your current presence. It's a truth. It is. that divine white light continues to pour down through the middle of our circle, amping up, clearing and purifying anything to make sure that all of our bowls are purified, all the connections of all the energies that we are connecting into and boosting, that everything is purified and clear and clean in our highest and best good and we are being supported always because that is how the universe works. We are always supported in every way. We have to learn to be open, allowing and accepting of it. Remember, giving and receiving 50-50, we give to the universe 
and we receive from the universe. It is the law of the universe. It's natural. It's normal. It is. Allowing beautiful, loving light and energy to come in and swirl through our circle, through our bu bubbles of light, through our seraphim. And every single thing that we are is drenched in the highest, purest love frequency. And so it is. Breathe it in. Giving thanks and gratitude to all the energies that we work with, to God, our higher power, whatever we consider that to be, the seraphim, to each other, to ourselves, to our body, mind, and spirit. Begin to let our circle come down, down, down. We begin to separate out of our circle and come back into our bodies. And I want you to be in your sanctuary in your body right now and feel your connection up in that group energy where all of that energetic work is taking place, where you are sending in, breathing energy into that bubble and that shaft of magnetic energy is just pouring more of that energy from all the other dimensions into your present now. And feel it pinging through your body as you have all of those bubbles in your chakras, around your body, around your aura, around your world, around your universe, and into infinity. Feel those layers of energy alive and breathing. What was that statement we read today? Miracles are thoughts. Thoughts can re represent the lower or bodily level of experience or the higher or spiritual level of experience. One makes the physical and the other creates the spiritual. We are working on all levels. Prayer is the medium of miracles. It is a means of communication of the created with the creator. Through prayer, love is received, and through miracles, love is expressed. Miracles are both beginnings and endings, and so they alter the temporal order. They are always affirmations of rebirth, which seem to go back but really go forward. They undo the past in the present and thus release the future. We are in the now. Time is no longer part of our experience when it isn't useful in facilitating the learning. Be in the now. Be in your presence. Everything resides in the now, in your presence. Feel that concept on all levels, body, mind, and spirit. Miracles transcend the body. They are sudden shifts into invisibility away from the bodily level. That is why we heal. Miracles make minds one in God. They depend on cooperation because the sonship is the sum of all that God created. 
miracles therefore reflect the laws of eternity not of time so when, so when we have that shaft of magnetic energy that is pouring from all dimensions and bringing it to our conscious awareness of our present now we have it in all eternity not of time we have it in our presence it cannot be anywhere else it cannot be anywhere but here right now feel that get that understand that and so it is everyone take a nice deep breath feel all of this energy anchored into your beautiful presence of now and so it is do you see how powerful you can be when you realize that you are much more than just who you are as a physical being you have access to so many different energies that can assist you whether it is going deep into mother earth and feeling that feeling of being within and feeling connected inside mother earth's womb grounding yourself feeling the pure dirt under your feet moving into different chakras and feeling what that feels like realizing that your heart chakra has a different message than your soul self located in the same chakra realizing that when you visit a different chakra that it has a message for you that without visiting that chakra you may not have even known it what's telling you that message when I was in my heart chakra and I asked my heart chakra what it would tell me it said as I was looking through that heart chakra to my the world around me my heart chakra said oh my gosh it's scary out there I don't want to be out there you know I haven't taken time to go into my chakras and listen to them and I'm gonna do that tonight because there are messages for me there could be messages that your chakras are telling you that you're scared or that you don't feel safe or that you don't feel heard or maybe you feel lonely that you need the feeling of touch from another person and maybe your mind has been telling you stay away from people I can't stand to be away from people I'm fine by myself or I'm fine I'm not afraid I'm safe but if you gave yourself that time to go into your chakras and listen to what they're telling you you might find a completely different story and then when we went up into our circle with the seraphim working with the energies that are available for us to breathe life and energy into our intentions from the time you put that intention into that bubble when I first said put your intention in there and then by the end after we have breathed energy and and breath and life into that bubble and then we allowed more to come in from other dimensions and then the servant amping them up and then creator cleansing the energy and purifying and holding space and giving to us as we need to learn to be receivers universe giving 50 percent us receiving 50 percent we have to learn how to receive from the universe and realize everything is in the now everything that we could possibly want is already in our now the only thing that keeps us from it is that we don't breathe life into it we don't believe it's a living breathing strong essence energy that is right here with us and we don't believe that the universe is saying here 
I'm always balancing. You have a need, I'm going to give it to you because the universe can never be out of balance. So if you block something off, it will go to somewhere else to balance and you will be off balance and it will try to find a balance some other way in your life. And sometimes that means if you are not receiving what you are asking for, you might have a shakeup. You might have something happen that's devastating in your life in order for you to shake up energy and start to receive in some way. So I suggest it's important to learn that you, the universe is wanting to give you and it needs you to be able to receive. So if you feel like you're not getting things that you are manifesting, you are not allowing the universe to give it to you. Get in your chakras, ask them what they're feeling. There might be messages of what you need to start opening to. If it's love, if you've been shut off and your body, your, your chakra's saying, I need touch, I need love, but your mind's been telling you that you don't need it, your, your mind has been shutting you off to that love and perhaps that's why you're not manifesting from the universe because the universe is only love. And only can it give to you from love if you are open to love. If you're not open to love, regardless if you say, well, I'll let the universe love me, but I won't let people love me. No, you can't do it that way. Because if you say, I let the universe love me, but I want people love me. We're all one. We're one big energy. We have to be open and open to love from any source that is willing to love. So realize how you could be blocking yourself. And if you need help with this subject, I offer sessions. I'm not here trying to sell my services. I'm just telling you that maybe you don't realize that how you think and how you have been talking and feeling could be, your head could be telling you something much different than your chakras or your energy is telling you. And you could be blocking yourself to receiving from the universe what it is trying to give you. And if you don't know how you're not receiving, it's worth figuring it out. So, we'll leave it at that. Very powerful, very powerful. And now I know that maybe the reason why the audio did not record, because when I came back to record it today, it is much more powerful, much more insightful, a lot more energy. I didn't give this whole speech thing at the end like this, so, if you missed the, the live one, it you didn't miss anything. This one is much more powerful. So I hope you enjoyed that. And we will move on to the readings now. And um, just so you know, somebody was nice enough. Well, they didn't realize, but they were guided to record the readings and they sent me the recording. Thank you so much. So the recording's a little bit, the sound's not that great, but it's good enough and I was able to pretty much sync it up with the video. So I'll let you go with that. The first reading is for Ramin. Ramin. Your first card is Nine of Cups. Your second card is from the Osho Zen deck or Ordinariness. So what I'm hearing about this is this is a, a card where your ducks are lined up in a row, okay? The seraphim want you to know that everything
everything is lining up the way it's supposed to line up. Be at peace with it. Be confident with it. Don't question it. There are things that are going to happen that you may not know about. So don't try to feel like you have to know everything because you don't. They're showing me that things are going to show up in the exact concise time that they need to show up. And you just need to trust what that is. You just need to trust the timing. Keep doing what you're doing. They're telling me that you're straight on track. Just keep doing what you're doing. Have patience, have faith, have trust. Because it's all unfolding for your benefit. Um, I'm also seeing the red. It's funny because he's got the red hat, but I keep seeing it on the socks. And so that tells me that you've got a strong foundation and that you don't have to worry about livelihood or, or, or you know, money or anything like that. Like, it's all unfolding perfectly, that you're going to have everything lining up for you perfectly. So this ordinariness card, what I'm hearing with that is be at peace. Be at peace with what's going on and let your normal life, like your everyday life, not work, but just your personal life unfold for you. Like, don't, they're saying don't take things so seriously and don't worry about things. Just create an environment where you can feel good, where you feel comfortable, where you feel good, where you can breathe. It's important for you to be able to feel good at home when you're not at work, when you're not doing that stuff, to have a place of solace and peace. So creating that comfortable space for yourself. That you can breathe and take a breath and reset yourself. Super important. Your other card is, I treasure my physical being. Treasure your physical being as a vehicle that houses your soul. Once you have the inner way, the outer way will follow. So that goes very much with this card is feeling, having a place of solace, giving yourself, I treasure my physical being, giving yourself that place where you can just, <sighs> you know what, this is my space, and I don't care what's going on with work or anything else, this is my solace, I am going to have this space to relax, it's really important for you to have a, a space that you can go to, that you don't have to think about any stresses where you can take care of your physical body. I treasure my physical being and make that very important. I picked a card here for you. Your success will be in direct proportion to the quality of relationships in your life. Wow, that's deep. Your success will be in direct proportion to the quality of relationships in your life. Whoa. That's a lot to think about. So, the quality of the re relationships in your life it is going to have a direct proportional effect on your success. So that means that it's really important for you to have good relationships in your life so your success will also be good. This is like, whoa, whoa, wow. That's heavy. That's deep, not heavy. That's deep. Okay. Jenny. of swords participation so what I'm hearing from this is the King of Swords is somebody who is pretty um, 
set in his ways. And what I'm hearing is having somebody around you that might be pretty set in their ways and how that can affect you is how will you participate in that? What I'm hearing from the angels is you can e either go down the rabbit hole of dealing with um, somebody that might have moods or, well, they're saying moody, somebody that's moody that might be uh, pretty strong-minded that can affect you because you are you do have a sensitive energy and um, they are telling me that you tend to um, give in or be quiet or aren't really that strong or forthcoming with how you feel just to keep the peace. And that's where they're saying is how will you participate in it? And this is really a gorgeous card because as you see, the energy is, you know, it's, it's strong. It has a lot of um, aspects where the energy is coming together and supportive of itself. So what I'm hearing from the seraphim is it's really important for you to be self-supportive. Don't expect <laughs> that you will always be supported by this person or others around you. But what's more important right now is for you to know that you have the tools to keep yourself together, to breathe life into yourself and hold a, a, an energy around you that is safe and supportive and can keep you spiritually fed. You have all of that. You have a lot of tools and a lot of things that you can do to keep your energy like that. So don't, basically what I'm hearing is don't let people around you affect your peace. That you can choose to align your energy to help you to get through your days and feel better. Don't let the chaos around you or the, the um, energy around you to bring you down. They're saying you don't have time for that. Okay, your other card is, I learned from both positive and negative experiences. Your joy is divine and so is your suffering. There's so much to be learned from both. So that makes a sense. That totally makes this card is basically this message. It's funny how the cards all will talk. And just a quick pull from this other deck. Wow. Passionately protest mediocrity. That is deep. Passionately protest mediocrity. I feel like this is the mediocrity that you need to passionately protest. It's not about being mediocre. It's about being amazing. So, your joy is divine and so is your suffering. There's so much to be learned from both. I learned from both positive and negative experiences. Positive and negative. Passionately protest mediocrity. Whoa. What a message. Sarah Shell. Innocence. 
So it's one of those messages that I totally get it, but saying it is another uh, story. This is interesting. How can I put this? Okay. I don't know how I'm going to put this. So what I'm, what I'm drawn to first with this card is obviously this is a wise man and he has a, um, is that like a, um, grasshopper or what are those things called? That's not a praying man mantis. I think that's a grasshopper on his, there you go, on his finger. So obviously it's like the wise man teaching the innocent, this is a, called innocence grasshopper it's not a cricket that's a grasshopper so then we have this knight of wands and a knight of wands he's in a hurry and he is it's almost what i'm hearing is that he is in a hurry he's on a mission he has a fiery energy but at the same time he's not the wise the wise man okay so sometimes he does things that aren't so wise because he's just rushing it and being in a hurry. And um, so what I'm hearing, I feel like this is a person, another person, though. I don't feel like this is you. It feels like this wise person is more you, and you have to not let someone else kind of persuade you or change your mind about things because you have to really, like, what I'm hearing from the angels is you're very, like, you're very, you're, you're, um, you're very wise, but uh, sometimes you let things sway you because you're not, it's not trusting. It's just that you're, you're open and then you kind of let yourself be swayed, even though you know that's not exactly the way you want it to go. But what that kind of warning, not in a bad way, but like a wake up, like, stay in your wisdom because this person is like the grasshopper this person they may think that you know they know what they're coming in strong and they know what they want but they're they really don't they're not there yet and for you to just hold steady and realize where you are and where they are and they are on your finger there okay they they don't have they're not there yet so don't be swayed by something that could come in quickly or has a fiery energy or that has that um, convincing energy that you might listen to and then you kind of steer yourself away from what you want to do. hope that makes sense to you. Your other card is, I trust the perfection of the universe. Mm -hmm. Send out love and harmony. Put your mind and body in a peaceful place and then allow the universe to work in the perfect way that it knows how. So again, I, I trust the perfection of the universe. You know, stay true to what's right for you. Okay, send out love and harmony. Put your mind and body in a peaceful place and then, the, then allow the universe to work in the perfect way that it knows how. Don't let this person, whoever this is, to influence you or sway you. Really important. Let the universe do its thing. You stay true to yourself. And I'm going to draw a card for you here. Whoa. I don't know what that's going to mean, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. Metamorphosis is naturally destructive. But I have a feeling it has to do with this. Okay, so don't let that metamorphose you. You'll have to think about that, but I think it has everything to do with this person. You don't want to go down that right route. Even though it might feel familiar, it might feel convincing, it might even feel nice there for a minute. I'm just like, red warning sign, don't go there. Okay, Caitlin.
first card is Temperance. Your next card is Flowering. I love this card. So the message I'm hearing from the angels right now is easy does it. Easy does it. So you see how temperance, it's hard. It's hard because when I move, it's actually the opposite of what I'm doing. So see how temperance is um, one foot is on land, one is on water. It's a balance. Uh, pouring cups back and forth. Um, to see this road is going up and here is a new beginning and it's got a crown so it's like a really great new beginning to know that to trust the flows of the universe keep everything flowing keep everything moving in a beautiful flow like dance and the beautiful dance and allow the flowering for things to unfold perfectly for you but, you know, this card is such a beautiful energy. She's sitting on a lotus flower. She reminds me of the goddess Lakshmi. And I just feel like such a gentleness, a flowing. She's also got a flowing um, energy to her. And um, I just feel like the deities, like the goddess energy, a gentle goddess energy, that pink and that blue energy is so healing. The green is the healing. And so just keep the flow going. Work with beautiful energies. I'm just feeling like your crystals and um, allowing the energy to flow and open up for you and flower. This is what you're meant to do right now because there's a lot. They're showing angels are showing me that there's a lot being created around you. There's a lot of energy with a lot of things coming in for you. So you just need to keep doing this to, to let it in. Your card, other card is, I develop a positive state of mind. The state of your life is nothing more than a reflection of your state of mind. The state of your life is nothing more than a reflection of the state of your mind. And this picture, it's kind of funny, it's your face off and your face is looking at your face like <laughs> you're looking at yourself so what you think is what you're putting out there make sure it's this good lovely beautiful flowing energy so you can have that come into your life and your card is Generous people have more to give. That is beautiful. What a beautiful reading. It has everything to do with what we were talking about tonight. Good work. Christy. Somebody says something to you that's kind. 
even if it's the smallest little thing like thank you for pouring my tea or giving me my coffee or thank you for um, serving me my plate of food like it can be the smallest thank you but receive receive that gratitude that small I keep hearing the smallest gratitudes receive them don't always think that gratitudes are like big gratitudes you what the seraphim want you to focus on is receiving the smallest gratitudes meaning not saying you're not going to get big gratitude but they want you to focus on recognizing the smallest little gratitudes and thankfulnesses and receiving them this is what they want you to do because as you do that you will feel so fulfilled and so happy and so loved like you'll you'll feel successful in receiving the blessings that are there for you it's that learning to receive those little small things even if it's like you open the door for someone thank you receive that someone says i like your talk really receive that receive the smallest gifts of gratitude and you will feel so wonderful okay and your other part is i meditate every day to nurture my soul look at all those candles so maybe get yourself some beautiful candles and some flowers and use your essential oils and just meditate just get connected again meditation gives you the opportunity to come to know your invisible self it shatters the illusion of your separateness this would be awesome for you meditate every day meditation gives you the opportunity to come to know your invisible self it shatters the illusion of your separateness actually that was a beautiful reading let me pull you one of these other cards now do it now that's pretty straightforward. I love it. Doug.
six months. This is good. And your other card is, I look for the meaning of life within myself, which goes right along with your cards. If you want to find a deeper meaning in your life, you can't find it in the opinions or the beliefs that have been handed to you. You have to go to that place within yourself. Yes. So that goes along with your messages about you doing the work, you learning and growing, and things coming in. So if you want to find a deeper meaning in your life, you, can, you can't find it in the opinions or the beliefs that have been handed to you. You have to go to that place within yourself. I look for the meaning of life within myself. All of it totally goes together. Let me pick you a card. This is funny. Get your halo dirty. <laughs> so you choose, okay? And it's okay if you want to get your halo dirty. You you decide what is right, what is clean, and what is dirty for you, okay? You're hooked up. You got the angels. Don't be afraid of doing it the way you need to do it. I love that. Get your halo dirty. You don't have to be perfect. That kind of reminds me of this one that I read first, Passion Over Perfection. Get that halo dirty. You don't have to be like that perfect thing that everybody else decides you are. It's within you. Whatever it is within you is the way. Homer. time with 
whoever it is. Because I feel like it's not one person. It's just like in general, people come along and then you start having these conversations and it's like, you're a nice person. So you converse and you go on and oh yeah, oh yeah. And then they're asking you all these questions about whatever, your star beings or whatever. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Talking, talking, talking. But basically they're like draining your energy and you, it's okay to answer people. But don't let yourself get to the point of distraction because you have places to go. And when you let this happen, you're not giving time for this. And there could be other people that are in this forward movement with you where you don't have to stop and just give all that idle time to people. I don't know if that how I, I can see how that can make sense because I've seen that happen a lot. Um, but it's weird that they're bringing it up, so it must be happening a lot, and you just, they don't want you to get distracted because they're saying you're on a mission, and you're moving fast, and this is a distraction from it. Um, basically what they're telling me is make sure you spend time with people who are also on that mission that are forward moving, not people that just want to, you know, be, you know, a distraction to that, that aren't really at the level of moving along with you. Okay. The other card is I forgive everyone, including myself. Mm. Forgiveness is the most powerful thing that you can do for yourself on the spiritual path. If you can't learn to forgive, you can forget about getting to higher levels of awareness. Oh my gosh. Don't let people distract you. Don't let those distractions do that. Because then it says, if you can't learn to forgive, you can forget about getting to higher levels of awareness. Well, this card is intense. I forgive everyone, including myself. Forgiveness is the most powerful thing you can do for yourself on the spiritual path. If you can't learn to forgive, you can forget about getting to higher levels of awareness. Holy crap. That's like a slap in the face. I was listening to that. <laughs> Dang, I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> I know. That's a, that's a bitch. <laughs> ah, your biggest challenge. That is hilarious. Oh my God, that is hilarious. Okay, and this is your card. Leverage your contradictions. <laughs> so leverage that contradiction. It says about your forgiveness, you can forget about it. You say you're a Scorpio. This is totally contradicting to who you are. You have to leverage that somehow. So find the leverage. That is friggin' hilarious. So there's some leverage. You got to find it. And I think your leverage is your Sagittarius because you're on the cusp. You got to leverage the Sagittarius to get on with this and and sweep that part of your Scorpio out of your way. That is freaking hilarious. That is really funny. Oh my god, that was a good one. That that one has to go down in history. Okay, Catherine. That is hilarious. Yeah, you need another touch of Bimini to heal that one. <laughs> that was a good one. Okay, Catherine. Oh, my God. Yeah, the healing hole. Definitely. And dunk yourself in there. Whoa. Three cards wanted to jump out for you, Catherine. Wow. All these cards keep wanting to jump out for you. But they're like three or four at a time.
laziness. Okay, so this is always a card, well always, but it's the typical meaning of this card is you've built things, your life up, but you're walking away. It's time to move on from the old and move into the new. And you feel good about it. It's, it's time. You know, you've built up your life, but you want to change. And this laziness card doesn't necessarily mean lazy. What I'm seeing is, I don't know how well you can see these cards, but he's sitting on, this is um, ice, like jagged ice. And so that's like the past. That's like the turmoil of the past. Like you're sitting up against it, but you're looking forward and enjoying life. Like this guy is totally loving where he's at right now. He's sitting there with his cocktail. He's got his vibrant umbrella, his slippers, his pillow on his feet, his beautiful robe. He's looking forward and it feels damn good. So it looks like you're leaving the old, hard, rigid past, and you're looking forward to better days, and it looks really good, and you're in a way better mindset, you're in a way better place, but what I'm seeing is that with that, to put your mind to what you really would like to see moving forward. So it looks like you're already putting your past behind you, but it's just right behind you. And right now he's just taking a breather and enjoying life. But they're saying to focus forward on what you would like to see in that future as you are there now. And, you know, you've been taking, it looks like, you know, things feel good, but you need to make some solid plans on what's next. The kingdom of heaven is within me. Once you have learned how to enter your inner kingdom, you have a special retreat within that is always available to you. Well, he looks like he's having a nice retreat, and it's definitely available to him. So this is good. It, it, what I'm hearing is the hard part is done. Everything else is going to be so much better and so much easier for you. Let me see what card we have here for you. You become what you worship. So, what is it that you worship? It doesn't have to necessarily mean you're worshiping anything, but you you become what it is that you love, what it is that you, when you look at it, it's like, wow, okay? So you can become a miracle. You can become a beautiful, beautiful, abundant life, a happy, relaxed life. It is what you worship, you become. So, wonderful. Looks like you're on to lovely new days. I
this card. I noticed, though, how much more is up here than here. So what I'm hearing is the past is moving out. It's You are doing it. So, and it looks like, see this, like you're moving out of it. You're much more in the present than in the past. So that is good. And it looks like this, this old stuff is moving away. So with the hangman, it's always about looking with a different perspective. But what I'm getting is it feels like there's been a um, delay. Not a delay. It feels like there's been a delay. Like things aren't moving as fast as you'd like them to. But what they're showing you, it's like, it's almost like, when you have the pain of having a labor, like that feeling of pushing down, it's like you're pushing this and you can feel the pain of that. Just, I, I just want to get rid of this old stuff. It's just, it's almost, I just keep hearing it's almost painful. It feels heavy and it feels painful. But the angels are saying you are moving through it. You are moving past it. You are becoming much more focused on your present. This is good. So don't worry about it. The process is happening. It may seem slow. It may seem even boring, but it's happening. It's like one of those slow bursts that just takes forever and it's, you're just sick of it and you just want it to just happen already. Um, they're just saying give it some time. It may feel a little, energy may feel a little slow for the rest of this year. But January and February is going to be a different story. I feel like February is going to be a good month for you. Um, but things are going to start moving. It's funny because they're showing me that, like, the birth happens in January. So just, you know, we're at the end of, uh, it's only a few more weeks in December. So just have a little patience. Things are moving. It's almost like being constipated. Okay, I work on my problems and then I release them. Anything that bothers you is only a problem within. Only you can experience it, and only you can correct it. I work on my problems, and then I release them. Anything that bothers you is only a problem within. Only you can experience it, and only you can correct it. So let it go. Like It's like that constipation. That's what I feel like. Like, ugh. It just won't come out. It's almost like that. I think you need to run energy through you to keep the flow going. Like that current that we were doing tonight. So let me see what this card is for you. I just keep feeling like this constipation. It's really weird. <laughs> and this is a nice ending to all the birth and pushing and heaviness and constipation. <laughs> May your new ideas feel like sunrise. Yes. So you will get through this and it will feel lovely again very soon. And remember, we have a solstice, right? So um, with the solstice, it's going to start getting lighter again. The light starts coming. We start getting the, the light, longer days, more light. So may your new ideas feel like sunrise. And you'll move out of your constipation. And Caitlin says, his dad joke, her dad jokes that manifesting breakthrough videos are like spiritual laxative. There you go. Maybe you need to be looking at those videos a little bit more. But your constipation and your birth will be over soon. <laughs> Do what you can do to keep your energy flowing. That's what's going to help you most. Don't be stagnant. You need to have the movement going. Okay. Kathleen.
Okay. Your first card, Kathleen, is Ace of Wands. Your second card is Brightness. So, the Ace card is always a new beginning, and the Wand is always a growth card. New beginnings with growth. So, a lot of times when you are in a growth period, it feels like a challenge, but it's not really a challenge, it's just growth, it's something different. But you are being reassured that um, you are at a right, right stage. So, anything that feels like a challenge, that is an illusion. You want to take it as, this is not a challenge, this is just growth, and I can do this. I'm good at changing, I'm good at being flexible, I'm good at going with the flow, as long as I know that this is not a challenge, then I can deal with anything. Not that you can't deal with challenges, because you're pretty good with that too. But you, your angels are reassuring you that this is not a challenge, it is growth. You're at a new beginning, you're right, you're ready for it, it's perfect timing. Everything is lining up, and everything's moving forward. They want to reassure, reassure you that nothing is stagnant, everything's moving forward, and it may not, you may not even know what that means, but I feel like it's um, more career-wise where um, things are lining up, like everything's lining up and um, it's coming into fruition. They're saying there's going to be a few surprises, but they're going to be good surprises. So just go with it. Go with the flow because you're exactly where you need to be doing exactly what you need to be doing. Your other part is love is my gift to the world. I fill myself with love and I send that love out into the world. How others treat me is their path. How I react is mine. So, yes, just send love out. How others treat you is their business and how you react is your business. Stay aligned with what you're doing because this is what's really more important. Um, don't let anybody distract you from that. And just keep your love moving because that, that's always, sending love to pave your way will always get you a lot further. And then you really won't have the hassle of people getting in your way. Let me see what your other card is. Whoa. Pay closer attention to your fantasies. I don't need to say another word to you about this one. That's like your perfect ultimate card, Kathleen. Okay, Brenda. Oh my gosh, you got to day 35 and messed up on your manifesting breakthroughs, I... I am going to not take the card for you, Brenda, because I was talking to I. Okay, Brenda. Right on the other side of the boat. If you look at it, it's not like you need to get there. 
you just need to focus your attention more there. You need to focus on smooth sailing a lot more than focusing on what's rough waters. You are moving forward and energetically with a lot of intensity. They are telling me you are doing the work and it is making a difference. And they're showing me all these dimensions that you're tapped into and that you're moving in and out of and that you don't even know what you're doing. Like, not that you don't know what you're doing, but you don't know that you're doing all that that's happening. So there's a lot of intense energy going on with you and around you, and you need to make sure that you give yourself downtime. Sleep is really important. You're doing a lot of this in your sleep. So don't think that when you go to sleep that things are just calm because they're not. You're moving a lot of energy. But focusing that, you know, I think I said that thing where you're like on the, on the uh, mountain top and it's like a, a division and you can either focus on the heavenly wonderful wondrous side or you can focus on the destruction or the stuff that feels lousy and it's like that the waves are here if you're going to focus on it but here's all there's like a ton of smooth sailing here and that's where you need to put your attention your other card is, I do God's work in peace and harmony. Authentic empowerment is knowing that you are on purpose doing God's work peacefully and harmoniously. That is awesome. Authentic empowerment is knowing that you are on purpose doing God's work peacefully and harmoniously. Focusing on the smooth side. I do God's work in peace and harmony. That's it. Your other card is gentle. And that's that. Be gentle. Take your rest. Take your downtime. You need that. You're going through a lot of shifting energetically and you need to take that space too crystal we're getting there peeps we're getting there Coming to that birth canal 
when you have a rebirth, it's like shape-shifting into something different. So you are changing. You are changing in energy. You are changing in physicality, and it's painful. And, um, you know, you may not even realize to what extent this is because the angels are saying that often you distract yourself with uh, people around you, and, you know, you may be feeling things and thinking about things, but then you just kind of push it off to the side and let yourself be distracted by family and things that you can be distracted with. And it's time to face up to these things, these demons that, and, and, uh, they don't, I don't like that they said demon. Like, don't feel like that's a scary thing. It's like those lower thoughts. You've got to face them and move through them because ignoring them or distracting yourself you're not going to get through it. They're going to stay with you. And so this, this pain will continue. It might be underlying. It may not be on the surface that you think. It's just something that you keep burying inside. And it's time to heal that, to um, move up in your skill so you can um, be in a higher vibration and get through this painful transition. And it's painful because it's so long because... A lot of times you don't take the time to look at it and work through it. You just go get distracted so you can feel better. Success is an inside job. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> are, you, are you sending a cord to my throat to shut up? <laughs> <laughs>
So it keeps coming up. And I didn't even remember that until I just saw this. And um, so just be friends with this cat energy that's with you because it's a protection energy. And, you know, cats are very psychic. So this cat can really help you with your third eye and your intuition. So what I'm hearing is things are changing for you. You're, you're becoming more and more in your power and knowing more about who you are. And a queen is um, in the cards is somebody who is empowered that it knows what they know who they are. They know what they want. They're very focused. Um, this queen is very giving, but also has a little fiery attitude as well. As well, we'll say what is on her mind. But she's also wise. And when what I'm hearing from the angels is when you come from your intuition, there's a lot of wisdom that comes out of you. It's when you come from your head, when you're thinking from your ego space, that things come out that aren't as wise. When you tap into your heart and your intuition, you have a lot of wisdom to share with people, and it will make your existence soar. And so they're asking you to be more aware of coming from your heart and your intuition, because then you really take yourself into these vibrations of this beautiful, magical existence where you can create feeling good, feeling fulfilled, having miracles and magic around you, and just having things line up for you magically, like being in um, alignment and flow and synchronicity of miracles and blessings all the time. So you have it. Just be much more aware and practice coming from the heart and the, the intuition, allowing your intuition to lead the way because it just opens and expands your world and your existence to a place that you have not seen before. So there's a lot of really juicy yumminess in this existence that you're in that you can attain when you do this. Your other card is, I am a human being, not a human doing. Don't equate your self-worth with how well you do things in life. You aren't what you do. If you are what you do, then when you don't, you aren't. Good point. I'm going to read it again. I am a human being, not a human doing. So you need to be. Just be human and be not do, be, okay? Don't equate your self-worth with how well you do things in life. This is a huge statement for you. Don't equate your self-worth with how you do things in life. You aren't what you do. If you are what you do, then when you don't, you aren't. So this is a huge card. If you are what you do, because then if you're not doing it, then you aren't. You have to be. Because when you are being, you will always be. This is a huge card. Okay. And that really has to go with this, too. Stop being, stop doing and be. This is, that totally goes with these cards. Okay, and let me pick your other card for you. Having high standards works wonders. And I'm not hearing high standards, not in a judgmental way, but high vibration, setting your vibrations for high, for this higher existence, okay? Having higher standards works wonders. Wonder. 
That is a life of wonder right there. And last but not least, Liz. Your first card is Temperance, and your second card is The Outsider. So, what I'm hearing is getting to the flow. So, with Temperance, you know, there's that balancing, one foot on the earth, one foot on the water, flowing the, the, the water, the cups, the liquid between the cups back and forth in order to make it to this new beginning. Uh, excuse me. It's hard to point because it's all backwards. This road to the new beginning, which brings you lots of success and uh, the crown. Like that's a wonderful new beginning. So this outsider card is, you've got to step into the flow to be in the flow. That's what we talked about earlier tonight was you got to get into the flow to be in the flow. Not feeling like you have limitations and looking, from, looking at things from the outside. Now I don't feel like you feel like you have limitations and you're doing that. But I do feel like the message of you got to get in the flow to be in the flow. What the angels are telling me is that a lot of times the way when you perceive things like you want to be, you want to be more sure and have like more data or facts or confirmation or um, not proof, but yeah, having more of a feeling like this is a good thing. Taking a leap of faith is harder for you to do. You'd rather have things, you know, like the fact showing that this is what you should be doing. And they're saying that is what keeps you like this, that it's time to learn how to go, be a lot more trusting and go with the flow and take those leaps of faith sometimes, even when you, you're not sure if that's exactly what you should do, that a lot of times you miss out on things because you didn't go for it. And, you know, whenever we take a leap, we always do land on our feet. Now, it doesn't mean be careless, but you can take a little bit of risk here and there. Like, nothing that would be risky that would be just like, you know, oh, I'm going to take a million dollars and go put it on the roulette table. Like, not like that. But be willing to take little risks. Not, nothing that is going to be, like, life-altering if you did it. But you start with a little risk, and then you work your way up. But it's not all about facts and figures and data. It's not about having the proof first and then making the move. In fact, it's never like that. Yes, in a perfect world, in a, in, and we'd all want that before we'd made moves. I mean, if I did that, I would never make a move because I'd never have all the facts and figures and the proof in front of me. I, I know that I've got to take a lot of leaps, and that's just how I do it because that's how my life has been. So they're asking you to do that a lot more because when you don't do that, you actually, in essence, do keep yourself limited. So you've got heaven working on your side. Don't be afraid to take the leaps of faith if they present themselves. Did I pull this? I guess I did. I forgive everyone, including myself. Forgiveness is the most powerful thing you can do for yourself on the spiritual path. If you can't learn to forgive, 
you can forget about getting to higher levels of awareness. And what I'm seeing in this picture is this, and what I heard is let it go. Just let it go. Like that's your form of forgiveness is just being able to just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Set yourself free. Okay. I'm going to pick a card for you. So much is a cry for love. So that's true. Everybody, in essence, is always looking for love. No matter what's going on in anybody's life or how they might ask for things or how they show up for us or how they treat us, it's a cry for love. So remember that when it comes to letting it go and the forgiveness thing. It's always a cry for love. That's some really great guidance. And that is it. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, I just got a message on here. Uh, your network. Hmm. I don't know if you guys can't hear me because all of a sudden I just got a message that it might be choppy. I don't know. But it's kind of late if that's true. Um, okay, and I just wanted to say that I am working on something right now. I'm going to be announcing a little bit of an end of the year special. And I'm just letting you guys know first because I know that when I announce it, I will probably become busy. Um, and basically, I'm, I'm going to, well, I'll tell you guys what I'm exactly doing. Right now, I'm creating a free clearing meditation because I feel like we all need this right now at the end of the year. Not only the end of the year, but with what's been going on in this year, you know, there's a lot going on. So I'm doing a offering a free, free clearing meditation, but then I'm going to be doing offering some other things like a release ceremony. I'm going to do a package thing where you get blessings and you can set your intention for releasing something for the end of the year. Um, I'm also going to offer a mini reading like I did last time when I went to Bimini, I did like three card reading and it was really deep. It was with the Isis card too, where it talked about, it was more about your life and your spiritual path and your ascension. So it's not about, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. It's about, well, it could be, but it's about your own path and spiritual growth. So I'll be doing, a, uh, offering that. And then also a personalized meditation to release any blockages that come up around your reading and creating some affirmations with your reading to just really have a tool for you to use with the information that you get and um, yeah and I think I was going to do something else but that one doesn't make sense so I'm not even going to read that so yeah I'm going to be doing that if anybody's interested um, let me know and I'll put you on the list and because you guys are in my insiders club, I will put you to the front of the line if you let me know you're interested. And again, I mean, the pricing is pretty low and so, and it's, you know, you can pick and choose what you want. You don't have to do all of them. Um, but if you're interested in that, just send me a quick email and I'll put you on the list and then I will um, let, I'm going to be sending an email about it. I just have to get this uh, meditation done first because I want to send the meditation with the email and then I'm going to open up for those other things. So that's it. Thank you. This went on for like almost three hours, but I'm glad I did all of the meditation and everything first. So if you needed to leave, you could, um, you don't have to stay for this whole three hours. Don't feel like you have to do that. Okay. Thank you so much. Great insight. I appreciate you all. Have a very happy holiday when I'll talk to you. And I will see you in January. The first Monday in January we will meet. And I'm going to tell you what that day is. 
is Monday, January 2nd. So I hope you guys aren't hungover. No, because the 31st, you still have a day. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you then. Have a good one. Lots of love, many blessings, and...